Hello World of YouTube. LP is in a much different place at the turn of this decade than he was at the turn of the last, because at the turn of the 2000s into the 2010s, LP, who spent the previous decade as one of the more throttling voices in underground hip-hop with two well-regarded solo LPs with production that he made himself that was very forward-thinking and engaging and dynamic at the same time with a slew of random collaborators in the mix at points as a part of a label that he founded that was stacked with other voices that were helping carry that scene was in a bit of a turning point when the 2010s rolled around because Def Jux, his label, became defunct and he was wanting to be more of an artist and less of a, a money hand in the scene. And through Fat Possum Records, he found a source to do that. And today, I'm going to be talking about and reflecting on what has still been his most recent solo LP nine years later before talking a bit about where he kind of ended up the decade, obviously. I'm talking about LP's 2012 gem, classic in my eyes, Cancer for Cure. You know I get bent, I'm a bender Future of Rama dominant Team gone bad and Passed along to my bloodstream pumping madness Now while I did talk about a song from this album recently On my Danny Brown Features list from last month I've actually been thinking about covering this record for a while Because while next year might be the more poignant time to cover it Because it's ten years as opposed to nine I've been thinking a lot about LP's career as a whole You know, you guys know I really love LP I've talked about him here and there on the channel But Cancer for Cure was the first album to come out post me becoming a fan you know i got into lp randomly one night i was at a friend's house and i spun fantastic damage and it like fucking changed my life it like blew my mind it like fucking really changed my perspective on aspects in hip-hop that i really appreciate you know i like a lot of what that record represents uh as a whole sonically but cancer for cure is an album that sees an LP sort of comfortable in his lane sonically and showcasing his excellence at it while upon reflection seemingly setting himself up to have a completely different career for the following rest of the decade that it was out. Because like I said in the opening, this was his first record in a while, but his first post-Jeff Def Jux's uh sort of closing down, as it were, hiatusing, whatever the hell you want to call it. And seemingly with that, he crafted a record that checks a lot of the, the check marks for what LP records had kind of been evolving through, uh, from Fantastic Damage through I'll Sleep When You're Dead to other classic-ass records. Um, but this sees him taking his own dense, noisier, electronic-driven production that's still showcased on parts of the buildup of Request Denied, uh, what, or the sample heavy sounds in the full guitar. a track that also ties into the themes of the record, but I'll get to that in a minute. I mean, hell, Drones Over Brooklyn is a track that doesn't just talk about drones. You get to hear them suckers in the beat. He's got some piano leads on here as well, with like For My Upstairs Neighbor, which feels tangential to parts of where his sound went, as do stuff like the saxophone solo on Works Every Time. I mean, when the when the sax comes in over his electronic beat, it just sounds like, you know, a match made in heaven. Or the bluesy guitar solo on Drones Over Brooklyn. You know, Stay Down is another track where there's just a nice swell amidst uh, some of the denser synthetics, even if that track is a little more minimally driven. Don't even get me started on Tougher, Colder, Killer. The beat on that track, one of the best on the record and easily one of L's best instrumentals. When the beat drops in there's that choppy synth with that punchy hip hop sample, the dude, like the Casio hip hop sample, he melds that into the fucking beat and it works so incredibly well. Um, I love, I love Tougher Colder Killer. It's, it's an incredible tune. Not just sonically, but like lyrically, the rappers in the cut, man, the, the, Jumping off of that, the collaborations on this record are fantastic. The track with Paul Banks, Paul Banks suits that sound palette so well, as does Nick Diamond. You know, L's not just putting together great collaborations with the rappers on here, but he is. But I wanted to focus a little bit on Paul Banks and, um, and Nick Diamond, because I think they do really well on their tracks. The hooks on those songs are so good. But the rappers on here, I mean, it's like... 
L just sort of took the Huzzah crew and was like, do you all want to be on my record? And everyone but Das Racist were like, fuck yeah, Das Racist are still here. And Spirit, they're sampled on True Story, the track that LP produced for them. Uh, he cleverly samples uh, Heems right before, right where his verse ends and L's begins. It's a great use of a sample that sort of just creatively feels like L is expanding on or just making a whole song out of where his part came in on a completely different song. It's so great. Uh, but the pairing of Mr. Motherfucking Esquire and Danny Brown on Oh Hail No, a track that I've already talked about a little bit, but it's brilliant that he got the two dirtiest, grimiest dudes from that song, put them on a track together, and made beats for them that worked so well. The pairing of Killer Mike and Despot, because Despot, he just is a heavy-hitting dude, uh, and so is Killer Mike. And this is like Run the Jewels alpha form, because L is obviously on this song, and he gets to chop it up with Mike a little bit. It's so good. They all kind of trade bars, but they all have these great lines. Like, it's just a heavy-hitting, hard song. You know, L's lines in particular, he gets he does stuff that he does on a couple times in this record, is he does, like, reference work, because on top of the paranoid-sounding lyrics that L normally carries, like on Drones Over Brooklyn, or The Jig Is Up, or his verse on Oh Hail No, or even just having just a situational, story-driven track like For My Upstairs Neighbor. It's LP again, sort of ticking them check boxes, just sort of like, yep, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna reflect on New York a little bit, on Five Dollar Vic, because that's, again, it's what I do, I have Drones Over Brooklyn, so, you know, I love New York. But he works in this sort of playful edge with that, that sort of alludes to his Run the Jewels style of flow. Because not to say that L changes in a bad way on Run the Jewels. He definitely is in a different realm altogether, but that's the great part about it. Because L and Killer Mike just have such good chemistry. It's a big reason why they're so consistent at making records. Because they just work so well together. And I'm so happy. You know, there's there's... Not to say that, that I don't feel great for a lot of rappers when they thrive, but there's some, when you see them thrive, it just, it, it makes you feel good. You know, that's why I like Kendrick so much. I love seeing Kendrick thrive. I love seeing Charles Hamilton thrive in 2016 when he dropped his self-titled record. It was so great to see, from in my, in my opinion. And LP with Run the Jewels, him and Killer Mike, seeing them succeed how they are, it's great to see. You know, they get to do their thing and a stage that just they they own it's all their own in my in my opinion but um yeah there's he plants seeds for that with with lyrically with some of his movie reference game like i mean the whole track the full retard is a reference to tropic thunder he drops an airplane reference and works every time it's like I think I to kiss him with on tougher colder killer he name drops the catalina, catalina wine, wine mixer. mixer like he's just again spicing up his own dense aggressive or paranoid word uh wordplay and and writing style with some playfulness that, again, sort of alludes to where his career would go. You know, the jig is up for all of its paranoia. It feels like he's rapping about somebody that could potentially be his 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 current wife, and you love to see it. You love to see it. The lyrics on here, sick. Really good. Uh, this record is also sort of made in tribute to Camuteo, an artist from Def Junks who passed away, and it's nice to see L just pay a loving tribute to Camus, just on a couple of points in the record, he brings that up. He samples Camus on... The Full Retard. Which is, again, just a great production work from him. His sample game, next level. I like the melding of worlds, you know, in reflection. I liked how great it was originally, but looking at it nine years later, it's cool to see sort of L manifest his own current success in the form of this record. You know, a lot of the hope... I don't know, it feels like this part of this record is fantastic, you know? You know, the hook on Sign Here is weird in reflection, if anything, because it's all about being an outsider. But again, seeing where he is now, it's seemingly he's more embraced than ever. He did a fucking Lord remix. And, the, and that hopefulness feels sort of, again, further cemented in the second half of the closer, Nothing But Me and You. Seems like he's really trying to manifest a sort of happiness. And... Having that be the bookend of the record continues to feel like L is just sort of planting seeds for him to flourish out in a completely different realm post this record. And that could be why we haven't seen a solo LP record since this. But with that said, am I missing 
LP as a solo artist. Not really. You know, because like I said, I love Run the Jewels. I think that his consistency with Mike is next level. You know, following this record, he produced rap music, the Killer Mike album. Some of his best production is on that record. I think it's incredible. And I think that, again, that sort of planted the seeds that these guys are friends now, and they're probably going to do a lot of shit together. And uh, it's great to see. You know, I, I the same with Killer Mike. You know, I haven't we haven't really seen Mike do anything solo, and that's fine with me. You know, I think that these two work well together. I, I'm happy that they're thriving in their own way, and I wouldn't want them to change it if they don't want to. You know, while I'm sure L doing a solo record would sound dope, same with Mike. I'm happy with them doing their own things. I'm glad that it's giving them exposure in a different way that's working for them. You know, because again, L did a remix for Lord, which is fucking weird. I feel like this record hasn't really been talked about in recent years much. It was on my end of the year list. I know other people did like it at the time. I, I think, I'm pretty sure Anthony liked it. I know Mike Seatown really liked it because Mike's a big LP fan, you know, so I know that the consensus around this record's release was that it was at least really good. I thought it was really great. I liked it a lot and I still like it a lot. I just kind of wanted to say that upon reflection on it, this record has some really interesting sort of, not Easter eggs, but sort of seeds planted that were flourished out in different ways in Elle's career, and I thought it was neat. Plus, I just wanted to recommend this record to anybody that hasn't spun it, that got into Run the Jewels. LP has a whole solo career that's fantastic. Listen to Cancer for Cure and work your way back. But that's my reflections on Cancer for Cure. What do you think of this record? Do you like it? Have you ever listened to LP's solo material? Are you a Run the Jewels fan? Let me know in those comments down below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music gaming and general nerdy content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons if you want to join their ranks to get early access to content, exclusive content, or to help drive the community. It's linked in the description. Thank you again so very much for watching and for the subscriptions. I'm going to get out of here. I've been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lives, and situations. And I'll see you another day. And I'll see you another day. Yes.